Hi, I'm Andre. I'm going to show you how to make a physics based magnet. So let's see how it works. So we have two monopole magnets here. And if we get them close to each other, because they have different uh, polarities, they will attract each other. Now, this implementation of the magnets does not take into account the shape of the static mesh. It only uh, applies the forces in the center of the object. So uh, the shape will not uh, influence the force between them. Okay, we also have two uh, monopoles that have the same polarity here. As you can see, they repel each other. Uh, I also have a dipole, which is made out of two monopoles. So it has two centers of attraction, one here and one here. As you can see here, we can uh, cluster them together like this. And it works. Uh, I've disabled gravity for this one so we can see more clearly. Uh, I've also made uh, magnets with different shapes like these ones. That you see here and I've also made a static magnet so this one doesn't move but uh, the advantage here would be that uh, it actually attracts object in uh, each point of the mesh as you can see here I can place these objects anywhere and they stick to it this is different from the monopoles because this applies the, the attracts everywhere, but the the monopoles only attract from the center. Uh, I'll show you why this is not possible to do with the dynamics one later. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see how we can implement this. So we have two elements here. One is the mesh that is going to be used for the collision, and the other one is a sphere collision that is going to be used to detect other poles. So when we uh, intersect them like this, uh, they will tr uh, start to apply forces on the other pole. Okay, so let's go ahead and create an actor. So first we'll create the pole. We'll call this pole like this. We'll scale it down a bit. Then we're going to create a sphere collision like this. I'm sorry about that. It's actually a sphere collision like this. And we'll call this action uh, action range like this. And we'll parent it to the pole. Now let's put this to 80, for example, like this to be a bit bigger. Now because this uh, sphere collision will, we want to detect uh, the magnets, we actually have to um, uh, put the magnets on a different uh, uh, collision um, uh, channel. So if you look here, if you go to the pole, and if you look at the collision um, pre presets right here, if we go to custom, then we can select here uh, the channel object type magnetic and uh, I'll show you really quickly how I did that. So if you go into the uh, project settings right here and go into the collision on the left and click on new object channel, write magnetic here and leave to block so that the magnets will collide with the world and click accept. And it will only uh, will create this for you. And that's the only thing you need. So you've created the channel, you select it here. And now the magnet is on its own uh, collision channel. Now if we go back to the action range, now we can actually, uh, if we said custom collision right here, we'll put this to ignore because we don't want to detect any object except for the magnetic channel, which will put to overlap. So ignore all except magnetic, which will be overlap. Now we can detect the magnets. So let's go ahead and see how we can apply the forces. So the forces will be applied actually uh, in the event graph here. 
will have for every tick will apply a force. So here, uh, let's go ahead and create a function and we'll call apply influence like this. And if we drag this here, we'll connect it to the event tick like that. And let's go ahead and already um, put the poll and the action range in because we'll need them. So let's create here, call this poll and we'll create as a primitive component like this. And another one, all right, we'll call action. which will also be a primitive component. So we'll patch these in. Okay, now let's go into the function and just quickly we'll create local variable for these because we'll need them. Uh, pull like this and it's gonna be primitive like that and we'll drag this and we'll set it like this. And now L action range and we'll set this one also like this. Okay, now <coughs> let's take the action range. <coughs> In order to detect the pulse, we'll use get overlapping components like this. <coughs> So we want for each overlapping component to add the forces. So we'll say uh, for each here. Now, because this is going to detect also our poll that we have here, we're going to have to add a special case for that. So we're going to add a branch here with a condition if this right here is actually different from our poll, which is actually we're going to use our um, uh, variable that we set. Okay, so now what we have here is only the polls that are different from these ones. These ones. Okay, so now let's figure out how we can add the forces. So let's see how we uh, how we think of this. So we have a pole right here. We have a sphere of influence like that. And let's say we have another one here. So this is our pole. And let's call this foreign pole. Now, our force uh, will consider by default that these will attract. So what we want to do is we want to add a force from the foreign pole to our pole like this. And so that it attracts the other one. Okay. So what we're going to have to figure out for this is the direction. We're going to have to figure out a uh, unit vector for the direction and the length. Because the length will actually give us uh, the force that we want to apply. So first let's get the direction and the length. So here, so the, uh, the vector we're actually going to establish that between the center of mass of the two poles because uh, we want, don't want to destabilize the objects. If we have an object like this, for example, and we have its pivot here, but the center of mass is somewhere here, uh, we want to apply the force into the center of mass because otherwise if we apply it here it's going to destabilize the object. So for that we're going to have, well we're going to have to create a variable for this one also. I'll call L from local for in Paul like this. Just set it quickly. It's also going to be a, a primitive component type like this. Now we have and we can work with it. So we'll get the center of mass of the foreign object. Remember the center of mass, it's in global coordinates. So we don't need to transform them. 
Okay, so also get center of mass right here. And because we want our vector to get to go from our foreign pole to our pole, we're going to subtract the foreign pole center of mass from our pole center of mass. So we'll take this here minus vector like this. Now here to get this vector of direction, we're going to simply normalize it which will gonna give us a unit vector in that direction. So a length of one. But we also want to get this distance. So for that, we're gonna use length. Actually, vector length. Right here. Okay, now let's figure out how we can add the force. Now, our sphere of influence uh, uh, dictates that uh, when we go outside of the sphere right here it's going to be the, the force is going to be zero so at the uh, limit also here it's going to be zero but so we're going to define a, a gradient of force right here so the force that is acting will be zero and will increase if we go that way to one so we're actually gonna make a percentage from zero to one and then here we're gonna say if it's one it's gonna be f max we're gonna define an f max that acts exactly so if the foreign object is here it's gonna be f max and increases towards zero as we go further away okay now to do this, so uh, we're gonna let's consider that the foreign object is uh, here, foreign pole is here, and we're gonna take this distance right here and uh, divide it by the total distance. So let's say this distance right here and distance max that we have here, max. And there's also a distance of influence, this one right here. So now we can uh, write formula for the force that applies in this point right here. So the force will be like this, force equals F max times. Uh, so now we have to get this um, uh, this one right here is d max minus di d max minus di and we're gonna divide that by d max to give us a, the percentage that we're having uh, how far away from zero we are and this we're gonna put squared because the law of attraction between magnets is actually a squared law. So if we do a graphic right here, like that, and we have actually one here, and I can put a graphic like this and zero here. Sorry about that. So zero, and this is distance, and this is force. I'm actually gonna have here f max f max so when the distance from here when we have one it has f max and if we go further away towards zero like here the force decreases okay so let's apply this formula so for that we're gonna need d max d max will consider to be the uh, actually the sphere radius right here so let's pass this quickly into the function right here so we'll put this to float uh, sorry about that float so this is uh, max distance 
So we'll get this and get its radius. And we'll put scale radius because if we happen to scale this, we want the actual uh, range. Now we have this here and let's create a local variable for it. You know it's a pity that a real engine doesn't let you use this as a local variable. It just lose we lose a lot of time with this, but so we we'll put max distance like this, which will be a float. And let's just set this also like this. Set actually. Okay, so now we have the distance. Get. So what we need to do is to say uh, d max minus d i. Well, d i is exactly what we calculated here, because it's the vector length, this one or this one, however you want to look at it. But the problem is that we might have a case where the uh, foreign pole might be like this. So it is inside, it detects it, but the distance from here to here is going to be bigger than our max distance. So we want to clamp that down. So we'll clamp this so that the max will be our max distance. And we'll use this value right here. So this is di, so di. So we'll subtract from the max. di take like this okay and then we'll say we'll divide that by d max so we'll like this so now we've got this and the only thing to do is square it so square so now we have the percentage of the distance that we're gonna actually multiply with f max and give us the force. So we'll we'll need an f max, so we'll add a variable here. So max force like this. So we'll put this to hundred thousand. It might seem big, but the forces are big. Need big forces to actually influence something okay so we'll uh, multiply that by this and now we've finally got the force that we apply in this point right here now in order to apply a vector of that force because this is scalar we'll have to multiply that with the vector right here, actually, like this. So now I actually have the force vector that we apply here to pull it. So let's add the force. So we'll take the foreign pole that we have here, get, and we'll add force at location. And we do this. Because if we add for if we simply add a force, it will add it in its uh, center a pivot, and we want it to add it in the center of mass. So we'll take the center of mass that we calculated here, and we'll plug it here, and we'll take the force and plug it here. Now we can already test it normally like this. So let's see. So we'll put two of those like this and just. Uh, yes, because we haven't simulated physics like here. And let's disable gravity. You can see this better. So let's try this again. So as you can see, they do track each other. So it already works. 
Okay, now we want to have these uh, attract each other if they have the same uh, polarity and repel if they don't. Uh, sorry, the other way around. So they attract if they have these different polarities and repel if they don't. Now, in order to do that, we can, uh, what I've did, and you can actually use multiple methods for this. You can use tags or whatever you want, but I've just uh, added two materials like this, North Pole and South Pole, and we're going to compare that. So to, in order to do that, we're going to have to actually add the material as a variable right here. So let's add material. Um, yes. Like this we'll make it visible and it's going to be a type material uh, here now this we need to set it to our pole so if we go into the construction script and take our pole and we'll say set material and we'll let index 0 because it's just a simple cube I will take our material and set to it. Now, if we go into our cube right here, we see that we can add a material. So, we search south. Uh, yes, here we actually, because this is a material instance, the type of material right here is going to be a material interface actually so that we can put materials and material instances now if we take this here and we write south then we get south pole and here north pole now the colors of these uh i don't know which one is which because i've seen on the internet different colors for for magnets so I'll just set it like this okay so let's go ahead and let's go back into our function and let's see if we have different uh, materials so we'll take the foreign pole from here foreign pole like this and our pole and we'll get material for the both of them and then we'll see if they're different not equal like this now we know here if they're different or not so if they are different this is true so let's so what we do is we actually change the direction of the vector that's the, the it's very simple to do actually so to do that we'll actually take this and we'll multiply it by minus one to change the direction so we'll plug this in here okay now the minus one will be from here so we're actually gonna have to add a select because our result from here will select if it's uh, it's actually going to be minus one here so we'll multiply either by minus one or one so let's see here so if the materials are different then we want to attract but we already attracted them so since they are attracting by default so if they're different then it means it's true then we want one because we don't want to change the direction and otherwise we want minus one so there you have it should already work now let's see so they do attract each other and if we change the material here and we put north uh, sorry south like this then they should repel and they do okay so now we've got a basic uh, implementation now let's see uh, 
what problems can uh, appear. So when we apply the forces between the two objects, because of the errors in the calculation, uh, we'll see that it, they will start spinning. And that is because the force that comes from here and the other force actually get a little bit um, unsynchronized. So it adds a force in some direction. So if you want to uh, diminish that, what we're going to do is actually take <coughs> the force that we have here instead of... Because now what's happening is that one object is applying a force on the other one to pull it closer. Or let's say... Let's pull them. Let's put them uh, like this. And actually, this um, this effect will, so as you can see, they kind of start spinning. They're spinning really slowly. They, they kind of start spinning, especially if they're uh, shifted like this, as you can see here. Well, it usually uh, appears when there's uh, there are uh, multiple objects, but yeah. So as you can see, it does start spinning a little bit. Now, because the red object actually pulls the uh, the blue object to it, and the other way around. But the problem is that uh, the forces get a little bit. Um, they j just get shifted a little bit because of the errors in um, ca uh, calculations. So what we want to do to reduce that is we want every object that we have is to apply the force that it calculated. It not only applies from, so if you look, it, it not will not only apply from here to here like this. It will apply actually two forces one onto itself and one onto the other of equal uh, amplitude so that uh, we get less errors. So we do that, it's just simply, we just simply do that by take, so we already add the force to the foreign pole. We'll just divide that. So actually it's after we've calculated the direction as you see here, okay. So this one will just divide that by two. Okay, so now we have the half. So one goes here as it should normally. Okay, and the other one will apply to our pole. So we get the pole, we, we add force at locations and same thing as before. And we'll take our center of mass from the pole right here. Okay. A location. And the force, it's actually going to be... Uh, we're going to invert it. So we'll multiply it by minus 1. Right here. So let's see this again. So if we stabilize them, as you can see, let them like this. Now they almost don't rotate at all. So yeah, we fixed that. Okay, now uh, let's see. So this should already work. Now I'm going to show you how I uh, made the uh, dipole like this. So what we have to do for this one, I will just look like for what I what I already made. So what we did actually is add two of those with the physics constraint in between. But let's just I think we'll just make it. So it's just simpler. So we'll take two, one of each and we'll add the physics constraint. So let's add here an actor. 
or dipole like this. Now, here we'll add a cube which is going to be south pole and let's search south here for the material and we're gonna put this to 0 0.4 like this the scale and we'll shift it to the left by 20 units actually to the left minus 20 and we'll add the second one a cube also actually we can duplicate this one and we'll say north pole right here we'll put to plus 20 and we'll put north material okay so let's add the spheres So it's actually sphere collision, collision like this. So we'll put a uh, south action range like this. Uh, you know what? I think we might. It might be easy to just duplicate the monopole. Okay, let's eliminate this. Okay. So we'll just duplicate this. So we'll call this dipole. Yeah, so we'll just duplicate this one. Put this here. Okay, so we we'll put North Pole and South Pole. Um, Actually, action north action range like this, and we'll put south here and south action range. Okay, okay, so we're already doing the work for the south pole, we only need the North Pole. So we'll add the function again here and we'll just put it afterwards. So take the North Pole like this, North Pole and North Pole action range and then we'll get sphere radius scale like this. Come on. Okay, so now it should work. The only thing we want to worry about is actually here, as we want to um, exclude also the North Pole. So we just we'll just hack this one. We'll say uh, because usually we would pass through um, variables, but let's just let's just add it here. So we'll do and. Um, it's it's going to be one pole and the other. So let's just eliminate this one and put, put, we'll hard code them. So we'll say if this is different than south pole and is different than north pole. Uh, you should pass these through variables, but we'll just do them right, like this. So it should work but we also have to add the physics constraint like this. We'll just leave it like that and we'll put let's shift those so it's going to be minus 20 and plus 20 like this and just let's give it so south here like that and North Pole. Okay, and we'll actually 
get rid of this in the construction script so it doesn't change our materials okay so now <clears throat> let's connect the physics constraints so we we'll put here <clears throat> south pole like this and north pole so they're connected as you can see and here for the settings we we'll actually lock everything so in order to be sure that <clears throat> they do not uh, divide you know they don't go too far we'll just <clears throat> adjust the projection the tolerance right here so which we'll was just uh, 0 0.1 to each so that means that it will project immediately once it passes that so they will stay together pretty strongly okay <clears throat> so this should work like this let's try it out so I'll drag this into the scene like that so let's let's try with this okay it does work so let's duplicate it uh, and we'll rotate it so it can attract yeah so as you can see it works so we can also connect him to these ones I think the force is not strong enough but yeah okay so we've got this done now last thing last thing we want to do here so if you look at these actually what I've done here is I've passed into uh, parameters here all kinds of things like mass radius and all the stuff like that it's really simple to do if you go here you see that in the construction script I'll just uh, take all these and uh, set them okay overhead mass sphere radius gravity and hidden one this is just for visualization now uh, as you can see here i've put different um, uh, different meshes what you want to make sure when you put different meshes is that you i we did already use the center of mass but it's it's better to also have the pivot in the center of mass so make sure you do that this one doesn't but it shouldn't make a difference but it's just uh, better like that okay so last thing we want to do is implement this one now this one we said is different because as you can see here it will attract in uh, each point of the mesh so this is cool because we can uh, actually it actually uh, acts like a real magnet so let's see how we can do this so what we've done here is actually um, instead of uh, grabbing the other objects uh, the other objects so we'll use a monopole pole for that so this is a monopole okay so we'll take a monopole this one Let's see where it is, the monopole. So we'll duplicate this. And we'll say static monopole. Okay. And here we'll go ahead and make it static now already. So that we do that by uh, uh, deactivating simulating fi simulate physics. Okay. So if you drag this in now the static monopole let's put it like this okay and let's say it's north actually south let's put south here so if you play now as you can see it's not affected it just stays there okay okay so now what we want to do is actually have this as you can see we have got a warning here we'll see about that 
so we want it's actually because this is static and we can't apply forces to it so here in our static monopole so if we look here let's let's see uh, what happens now let's see like this so we'll do the big one so let's say this is the big uh, pole and this is a smaller one now when we attract the two we put actually like here the forces like that normally but what we want to do here is actually get the closest point of the mesh which is going to be somewhere here the closest point of the mesh and have the objects at, uh, go to this have this object go to this point because this is static okay it's gonna stay in place so only this one will move so it's gonna move to the closest point so to do that we're gonna use uh, it's just a simple so let's go in here so to get that point it's just a, a simple uh, function but let's see how we how we apply this function so we want to so when we when this object pulls from here it's gonna pull um, this object it has to pull it like that here so that means that uh, so if we look here let's see so the foreign pole we have it here so we pull it like that and our pole it's so this one right here we're gonna which is this one we're gonna replace with the point this point so if we'll say like this let's just pull like this now so let's see again so let's we'll see if this is static if our pole is static is simulating physics then we're gonna select so just select like this so if this is is simulating physics then we're gonna take this one because we know it's not static but if it's not simulated physics we're gonna calculate another one so this one right here will get will say from our pole actually let's use the variables that we made so we'll say get closest point to collision so it's gonna take the collision of the static mesh and it's gonna calculate the closest point on this collision to the point that we give it and the point that we give it is the center of mass of the foreign pole this one okay so we'll take where is the foreign pole uh, this one it's actually it's kind of becomes of a mess here so this here it's gonna be the like this so get the closest point on our collision to this point so it's gonna find this point right here so the, the point this point will actually be the start for our vector that we use here so our vector it's gonna wait, so it's, it's actually gonna start from here but it's gonna go to this point okay so the uh, because we've uh, replaced it here it should affect the other stuff normally okay and now the only thing we have to do is say because here we're applying a force so if 
Yeah, so I think this should work already. Let's see. Let's make this bigger. Okay. Yeah, so as you can see, it already works. It's actually attracted to uh, the point. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, now you see this uh, warning right here. It's because uh, the this object itself is trying to pull the other one which is not okay because this is not simulative physics so uh, what we need to do is go into this one the monopole not the static monopole but the mono the dynamic monopole and say if because we add the force equally right here we'll actually not add the force to the other one which is the foreign pole so I'll say here we'll just uh, well, we can just multiply it by zero or something like that. So we'll see. Now we'll actually select or we'll use a select. Okay, and we'll say if the foreign pole is simulating physics then we're gonna select and so if it's simulating physics that we want to affect it so we put this to true if it's not we'll let zero we'll leave zero okay we could branch also but yeah it's the same thing i mean but we'll leave the force that we have here okay So as you can see, it works. Uh, well, I think the other one, yeah. We still have an error, let's see. Static monopole cube has simulate physics enabled. If, ah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so silly me, okay, so the fact that we have to use actually have to use a, a branch here because it will still apply force so yeah i don't know why i didn't think of that so we have a branch so if it's simulating physics then we do this if not then we jump right here okay so now the error should be gone let's see again no well uh, what is that? Yes, it's because itself. So yeah, we fixed that. But if we go into the static monopole here, then itself it's applying force on itself. So uh, here, so if itself it's simulating physics. Uh, physics like this. Uh, sorry about that. So I'll do a branch here also. So this is onto itself. Okay. So you actually, you know what? We'll just eliminate this because onto itself it will never apply a force. So we'll just leave it like this. I've disconnected it. So let's try again now. Yeah, so no error this time. Yeah. So as you can see, it works. Now the... Uh, well, I think you can figure this out, but it's just, I don't know why it gives an error right now, but yeah, you can figure it out. It's simple. Ah, I think this, this one, it's actually entered the range or something because we didn't code it yeah okay so now what we want for this is actually uh, put its range bigger 
Uh, so we'll put this to, let's say, 400. Like this. So yeah, it's attracted by this one also. So as you can see, it only um, affects, it, it pulls it exactly at that point. Now, there is only one thing I would do here. If, if you can see, we have this and normally it doesn't happen. It's because it's actually pulling to the exact point on the mesh. So what we want it to do is actually pull something somewhere inside, like we do with this one, because then the object that it's uh, gonna be in contact with, it's gonna stabilize on the surface. So what we're gonna do with that one is actually, we're gonna add a cube here, uh, like this, which is gonna, we're gonna call, uh, or uh, let's, let's say it's going to be a box collision like this so we're going to call this one core and well it's static so we could leave it like this it doesn't matter so if you look here uh, what we actually want to do is not scale this one let's put this back to one here I'll just scale inside here so action range why well, if we scale let's exit this because if we scale it like this then it's gonna scale this also so let's see here like this and let's make it a surface actually okay so let's put the action range back in, okay. So now the core, it's actually gonna be the inside of this. Uh, so let's make this bigger. So it's gonna be the inside like this. Uh, not this uh, extent uh, so put not this one so this should be somewhere over here it's good so we want it to be something like this so it's inside here but also inside on the z-axis so if we get this Lower. So we'll put this to wireframe so we can see inside. So if you get this lower, now as you can see, it's it's kind of the core that will attract it. So make this attraction core right here. Okay. So now the only thing to do is actually replace what we put here. Our mesh, where is it? So we get the closest point, but not to the, the pull, to actually to the, the core, okay. So now, if we go here, we're actually gonna see it stabilize better. So at the edge, it has problems on the edge. So as you can see now, it stabilizes, it doesn't stay on the edge right here so it's it's exactly how it should work yeah so it works also with the dipole if you want of course it's this one is repelling this one so it's normal that it doesn't easily uh, uh, stabilize Okay, so that's kind of it. Um, now, what I wanted to tell you more is you can also uh, scale this if you want. Because we split the forces, it actually work because works. Because before, when I, when I, when I, let's say I put this, uh, I scale this a lot bigger. 
this one. Let's say we we'll put this radius to 200 like this. Now let's see how it behaves right here. So it doesn't rotate as you can see. It does it because we actually split the forces because it we wouldn't have split the forces so the force each force will be split then it will try to uh, it will start to rotate and actually go all over so yeah you could uh, mess with the mass if you mess with the mass then uh, let's get this closer the camera right here so if you change the mass then it will become some kind of like a um, planet then if you put this, let's say you put this to 400, then this one is going to come up. So it actually acts kind of like in the real world. Because the smaller one will come to the bigger one. Okay, so uh, that's it. If uh, you... I uh, thought this video was um, useful. Please uh, like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.